Now I always do an inspection of the containers just in case there's damage I take a photo of it <coughs> and use that later in case they try to blame us for some damage okay looks good I'll move the ramp over and we'll get to loading Pieces of steel that goes through, 
I can actually damage the, the knives on the third on the uh, on the second machine in line, which is called the rasper. The uh, super chopper chops ties down to about. Well, you can sort of see. I'll get a bit of a close up. It, it depends. Sometimes you might have a piece that's you know sort of that big. Sometimes it breaks it down to something like that, and sometimes even smaller. The rasper, on the other hand, actually breaks that down to even much smaller sizes, something maybe the size of like a five cent piece or like a uh, five, five peso coin. As you can see, it's, you know, you get some large pieces, you get some small pieces, but that's what the super chopper does. The rasper breaks it down to even much smaller sizes. And then we have two granulators that follow the rasper and they turn the, the little chips, you know, something like that. It can turn that into like a two to three mil granule. The next one takes it down even further to like say a, maybe a one mil granule. And then the next, the last machine, which is the cracker, the cracker mill, that actually turns it into a powder. That's why they call it the cracker mill, because it's like the, um, I don't know if you know, the old coffee grinding machines, like a mill. And actually two big steel rollers, they roll onto each other and they grind it into a fine powder. And our customers turn that into other products such as different types of glues, silicons. Um, they make road base in Australia. Here we have a lot of uh, bitumen roads. A lot of that rubber goes into the into bitumen. <clears throat> we are experiencing more and more stadiums and children's playground equipment that are actually being made by by customers and they are completely recycled rubber. They obviously take our product, then they, when they get it, they sanitize it, clean it. So it's hypoallergenic and clean. If the child falls, grazes a knee or something, they're not gonna get any infections or anything. All the wire has been taken out of the tire from the, literally the stage two and stage three, the rasper and the granulator. Once, the, um, once it's gone through the, the second granulator, all the steel's taken out, so it's just clean, fresh rubber from the tyres, and the product is clean. I'd hate to think of playing in a playground and having little strands of steel sticking out. Whoa. It makes the spine tingle. So we sell a clean product here. And like I said, eco-friendly. The amount of car tyres that end up in landfill is just mind-boggling. We're talking millions, if not hundreds of millions of tyres sometimes end up in landfill. If people like us don't do what we do, then these open, um, what do you call it, the open cut landfills will just be full of decomposing, rotten, broken, dirty tyres and they take hundreds of years to decompose. But we're doing our bit for the environment, making sure that these ties don't end up in landfill. What's that? So that was uh, number five. I'll go to number ten. I'll just show you. There's a there's a technique to fill in these containers with 25 ton. pile is a steel plate and you don't want to catch it otherwise you could bend that or damage the bobcat so as I get closer I need to lift the bucket so I don't hook into the steel plate so there you have it this is what I do most of the days when I'm not uploading my <coughs> music videos or, or not anymore, my travel vlogs. I don't want to be doing this forever. My back's taken enough of a beating driving these
these um, these machines over the last 20 years. I'd really like to just relax. My goal is to move to the Philippines and retire. I don't want to be stuck in this rat race for the rest of my life. I want to enjoy what I have left on this planet.
make them grow, make them successful, and increase their financial capacity. None of them, well, 99% of them give nothing back. And I'm finding now, a lot of people are moving to the Philippines for that one reason. They know if they move to the Philippines, and we have a, a term here in, in Australia that's called brown nose. If you brown nose enough, people will fall for it, and they will feel sympathy for you, and start to like you. And I feel a lot of these people are brown nosing. I'm not going to mention any names. I'm sure you guys can probably figure that out. I went to a, um, a live stream about a week ago and everyone that I was listening to was saying the exact same thing. Pretty much about the same people. And you know who they are. Most of these people have over 500,000. Some have a million subscribers. Some are getting close to a million subscribers. Most of them live in the Philippines now. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. I don't want to mention any names because I don't think I have to. And yeah, like I said, easy for them to make these videos and make all this money, but they're not giving nothing back. If it wasn't for the people, they'd have nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, if I can start a new trend, maybe, hashtag give something back, or I don't know, maybe you guys can think of a good hashtag and let's see if we can make that viral and pressure these guys into giving something back. I know there's a couple of big YouTubers in the Philippines that receive brand deals from big corporations, and to me that's not the same. The corporations are just plugging themselves, advertising for themselves, getting free advertising on the backs of these YouTubers. And then these YouTubers obviously have a lot of stock of the products that's been sent. But I can guarantee you, most of their friends get first choice and whatever's left, they give to their subscribers. And to me, that's not the same. I mean, if we'd all be the same if you were getting let's say someone's Samsung or Apple sends you a thousand phones you're going to give one to your brothers your sisters some of your friends you can't you're not going to get rid of all of them but the rest of them to appease your subscribers you might do some giveaways on the on your channel and I don't know to me that's not the same okay you're giving something back but it hasn't come directly from your heart if you didn't have it you wouldn't have given it to it or if you didn't if you didn't receive it you wouldn't be giving it away i don't see any of these people actually giving hard-earned money that they make from youtube um, i just feel they need to start giving something back and if I can start a new trend then I'm happy. Okay so I'm, I've done 10 scoops now I'm at number 11 and I'm just going to push these last 10 up. And that's what I normally do when I get to 10 and then just start laying down five at a time. So I'm using number 11 now to push number 10, trying to get it up as high as I can because you've got to get it up to the ceiling of these containers. These are 40 foot high cube containers and you really need to push it up to the roof as high as you can. I'm happy with that. And then I just push the base down, give it a couple of taps. One, two, three. Looks pretty tight so that's it, so now I start the next row, that's number 11, and I do 12, 13, 14, and push it with number 15 to get it up, and then 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and so on, till I get down to the back here, which is number 60, and it 
should be close to uh, 25 ton. Then I can uh, I take a photo just to show the client. Um, he wants evidence, so I take photos of that, and then I, I send that off to him. And continue on with the next one. So I don't know if you can see the steel plate here, but this is really dangerous. Just down there, you can see the steel plate. It's about a 10 mil, 10 mil steel plate. It's uh, was it two four six? It's eight meters by 16 meters long. Um, when the rubber's on the steel plate, it tends to be a little bit cleaner. But once it gets off the off the plate, I can't help but to scoop up little rocks occasionally and dust. The client not not really happy when he gets that, but there's nothing we can do. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's what I do here. I normally pick up this. Oh, let me just try and move this ramp. This is what I mean. People just don't don't put things back where they get them from. So this wastes my time when I should be doing other work. I have to other people's mistakes. I'm just moving this ramp out of the way. And I just want to put a few scoops. This is the um, this is parts of the e-waste once this goes through the super chopper. Um, most of the metal we try and separate most of the metal that comes out of the super chopper. We have a uh, rotating magnet with a parts of the computer, the plastic, fly off onto another conveyor and the metal gets caught on a uh, magnetic conveyor that gets thrown onto another conveyor that goes into a bin and they bring it here. So this is pretty much steel, all the scrap steel and what we do with this, we put this into another bin, a separate bin and we send that off to a metal recycler he pays us for this scrap metal and then they melt it down obviously and make new products out of the recycled steel so we try and recycle as much as we can um, everything everything in the hard drives the, the copper the steel the plastic the, the glass we separate pretty much everything and it gets recycled, it gets made into another product. Seven o'clock, the boys, the 
other boys will be arriving soon. Like I said, I start at seven, at six, sorry. Everyone else starts at seven. And normally once the supervisor arrives, I go and have a chat with him for about 15, 20 minutes. Catch up. What's been happening yesterday? Because I finish at two and they continue to go to three. And normally, like I said, I'm not in there to see what's happening and there's always something happening, always someone breaking something, someone destroying something and I just catch up with the boss just to see what's going on. A bit of gossip. So there you have it guys. A day in the life of Zockstar. Um, yeah. I'll stop recording for now and I'll, if I have anything to add later, I'll restart the video. So if you don't see me till home time, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably end it later on this Arvo when I go home. So stay tuned guys, I'll see you on the other side. Till I get up, time is barely on our side